All righty. Uh, first of all, I want to say good evening to everyone. Uh, prior to me commencing the actual city council meeting, at this point, I will um, go ahead and read out uh, two decisions that were made uh, in closed session by the city council. The first one is the city council voted 4 0 for the management uh, development to bring in a DDA. Uh, the council is for consideration. Number two, the city council voted 4 0 to direct the CEO. Uh, to retain a professional search firm for the new police chief. But before I forget, and before I go on, I just want to first of all acknowledge and thank uh, uh, Chief uh, Mike Taylor, who has been with the Baum Park Police Department for 37 years. Uh, I want to thank him and recognize him. I met uh, Mike in uh, 1992 when he was a sergeant, uh, lieutenant, and a captain, and a police chief. So, uh, Chief, and we want to hold something for you in January, as I stated, most likely the, the, on the 16th. Hope you can make it to be able to recognize him for the legacy uh, that he partook, partook in the city of Baldwin Park. And I will say he, li he, li he leaves a history uh, of, of quality uh, work and, of course, mentorship for many of the officers here in the department. So on behalf of the city of Baldwin Park, Chief, thank you very much uh, for uh, the unconditional service that you brought uh, to, to the city as well. Mayor, so then, uh, yes, Councilmember Ricardo Pacheco. I would also like to add to that that uh, uh, Chief Mike Taylor, you've been an exemplary chief for uh, many years. I know you've been working here as a chief. I think, you, as, you, uh, as you like to say, uh, since your young adulthood, you've been here uh, working very hard. And, and uh, you've gotten, uh, took advantage of the education uh, programs we have here. You've gotten up to your Ph.D. in, in, uh, in, in your, you, your, in your uh, profession. So, and you have your master's degree, your bachelor's degree, and um, all that while raising a family and working here. So... And you also did a lot of uh, crime programs. I know early on when I got in, you took care of a lot of the crime programs uh, along Garvey Avenue, all the drug and prostitutions that were occurring there and all those motels. And because of that, we were able to start, knock those down th that area and bring in what's new, all the new development, the retail stores uh, that are there today, you know, the Walmarts and the Home Depots and all that was a part of you starting to clean that up and then just continue to do all the work that you've done here within our community so but we'll recognize you uh again uh, in january and i just want to thank you for your service all right okay all right thank you thank you very much uh, and we look forward to, to that actual uh, time so at this point i'm going to go ahead and make a motion uh to close the study session that is my motion second That's, who's second Okay, uh, second, second Mike, uh, Council Member Ricardo Pacheco. Any objections? See none, so move. All right, though, at this point, I'd like to open up the, uh, no, the, I'd like to open up the uh, Baldwin Park City Council special meeting. Today is December the 19th, 2018. I'd like to open that concurrently also with the, or the, re, the finance committee in the housing department. Uh, I think those are the only two that we have. So that is my motion. Successor agency. And successor agency as well. Okay, there's a second by, uh, Council Member uh, Avila as well. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and uh, go start out with the invocation. So we'll have, I'm not certain, I thought I saw Pastor Jackson here. No? Is, is, is Pastor Flores here? Yeah. What's that? You don't want to do a combination before the end of the year? Come on, let's do a combination before the end of the year. We need the prayer. All right, so at this point, we'll have also uh, Pastor Flores come up here. And I'll ask all those that are able to stand to please do so at this time. Thank you, Mayor, for the honor and privilege, and just want to welcome the new council to this meeting as well, too. Um, and remember uh, Sister Monica Garcia's family yes. and those who have lost lives recently here in the city. Let's pray. Uh, gracious God, we, we pause on the onset of this uh, meeting uh, to, to look to you, Lord, for our help, Lord. Your word tells us that we look to the hills from our help, and our help comes from the Lord. Uh, the creator of heaven and earth. Lord, we pray for our city. Lord, we, uh, our city, in a sense that mourns the loss of lives recently, uh, and yet at the same time, Lord, we seek healing and restoration so we can move forward and continue to serve and serve your people uh, with excellence. We thank you for our council and our new council members. Lord, we are grateful for those who participate in this leadership. May they always uh, honor you and serving your people. We thank you for those that are present today, God, and this season where we're mindful of uh, your love for us through Christ Jesus, Lord. May your blessing be upon uh, these proceedings. Amen. Pastor Jackson. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now 
This city, Baldwin Park, needs your helping hand, Lord. We're asking you, Lord, and touching the city council, Lord God, police department, fire department, school department, businesses, Lord. Give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding in how to govern the city and to make uh, great decisions and to betterment the city. Lord God, uh, things are happening within our city once again. And we tear down the strongholds. We tear down the gang situation and violence, Lord God, the drug situation, Lord God. We ask you to put your mighty hand upon the businesses that they will flourish, Lord God. Our police department and giving them uh, safety as they are out in the streets uh, doing their duty, protecting uh, and serving our citizens, Lord God. We ask these things in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we say we need you, we need your mighty hand. So come, Lord, touch our city, Baldwin Park. In the name of the Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Flores and Pastor Jackson. At this point, we're going to salute to the flag. So I'll ask everyone to please remain standing. Place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, before I do the closure, uh, I want to go ahead and do roll call, then I'll go ahead. Thank you. So at this point, we'll have our city treasurer, Maria Contreras, that will lead us in the actual. Um, Good evening, everyone. Do. Buenas noches a todos y bienvenidos. Council member Ricardo Pacheco. Council member Paul Hernandez. Present. Council member Alejandra Avila. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Monica Garcia. She is, she is out, so at this point I'll go ahead and make a motion to move to uh, allow her. Mayor Manuel Lozano. That's, here, present. Thank you. So at this point, th thank you very much. So at this point, I'll make a motion to excuse Council member Monica Garcia, Vice Mayor uh, Monica Garcia. Is there a second? I second. Second. Any objections? See none, so move. All right. So at this point, I want to also we'll close on behalf of uh, Vice Mayor Monica Garcia. Uh, her dad, a uh, very dear friend of mine as well, uh, born October 23, 1951, uh, in El Paso, Texas, um, uh, passed away December the 12th of this year. So our deepest condolences goes out to Vice Mayor uh, Monica Garcia and Sam, who was a, a, a really a special individual, a, a friend, who not only contributed immensely to Baldwin Park as well, owning his shop here in Baldwin Park, and uh, bringing the family to Baldwin Park as well. So uh, on behalf of the city of Baldwin Park, I want to wish our condolences to the family, and we'll get forward a letter to them as well. Thank you. Mayor, if yes, I may also just uh, read uh, at the uh, funeral of the uh, of, yes, uh, Monica's father, Samuel Garcia, Jr., has a beautiful yes. poem on the back of the funeral card. I just wanted to read it in memory of her father. And it reads, The Broken Chain, We little knew that day God was going to call your name. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone, for part of us went with you. The day God called you home, you left us beautiful memories. You, your love is still your guide. And although we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken, and nothing seems the same. But as God calls, you, or God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. And this is uh, in memory of uh, Monica Garcia's uh, vice mayor of the city, uh, father, uh, Sam Garcia, Jr. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Ricardo. Mr. Mayor, may yes, I... uh, at this point, Council Member uh, Paul Hernandez. Thank you, sir. I just, again, just want to echo the kind words that both uh, you and uh, the rest of the staff here, uh, knowing Mr. Garcia for quite some time, uh, he certainly will leave a legacy behind. Uh, here in our community and as a man who has uh, given quite uh, quite of uh, not only his soul but his heart uh, to his family and to the community. So again, I uh, just want to recognize uh, him and of course uh, Councilmember Garcia for uh, their loss. But again, uh, it's his spirit that lives on uh, in each and every one of us and the impacts that he's made on, uh, on each of us, especially myself, uh, are everlasting. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council members? Thank, yes. Okay. I also yes. Uh, like to extend my condolences to the Garcia family. I know uh, Monica's mom for many years, Rachel Garcia, and uh, her granddaughter works with me, Victoria Garcia, and it was actually very devastating to hear the news and the reaction. 
um, everything that's going on with the family. So my condolences to the Garcia family. Thank you very much. Thank you, council members. All right, um, before we go on, I want to recognize our new assigned battalion chief from the East Reason Regional Operations Bureau, Mr. Mike Eman. Thank you very much, Mr. Eman. Thank you for being here this evening as well. We look forward to working with you as well. So at this point, uh, council members have anything or any type of announcements they wish, wish to share? Mayor, I just want to thank the uh, POA for the wonderful job they oh, yes. did. All the employees got together and did a number of um, get them a Christmas program and gave away a lot of gifts to all the, the uh, community. And uh, I just want to thank you for the outstanding job you did and also for the Walmart program that staff put together. I think it was a Parks and Rec. You guys did a good job there too. So um, thanks staff for all your Christmas gifts you gave to the community. Yeah. 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 Thank, yes, thank you very much. How many uh, gifts were given out for the uh, chief for the toy drive? Did we mention Walmart? Okay. Well, we had a truck parked in front of Walmart, our SWAT truck. We uh, we have an event that we do a couple of days a year or more. It's called uh, Stuff the SWAT Truck. Mm -hmm. So people that come out of Walmart or Target, wherever it's parked, uh, with toys, they stuff the truck with a free toy for underprivileged children. They get a picture with the cops, and uh, they get to climb in the truck. So oh, that we got that. And then the uh, Christmas with the Cops event, which uh, all of you, I believe, attended, uh, and you saw as a pretty huge event. I'm guessing somewhere in the neighborhood of about three to 4,000 uh, uh, people attended. Uh, we gave away more toys uh, this year than we did last year. And then last year we gave away more toys than we did the year before. So every year it kind of grows exponentially as the word gets out. I'd like to thank the school district that's here and Parks and Recs and uh, all the other people that help us get the word out, especially our religious leaders in the community. Uh, they were a big help in getting the word spread out to their flocks who then again spread the word. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, recognize and thank uh, Walmart uh, for also contributing uh, to the literally what I think was 400, 400, am I right, or 300? 300. 300. 300, 300 and what? 350. 350 youth that were out there. So we all uh, were out there sh uh, helping shopping. them shop away. So it was great. So I want to thank. I uh, thank the, the Ball Park Police Department, thank uh, the Park and Recs, Manny Carrillo, your staff, and all the businesses that partook in that particular area. Thank you, City Attorney, as well. And also, also, Mr. Mayor, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, sir. If I could just mention the uh, Techniques Car Club. Oh, yes. uh, they were a big oh, donor of right. uh, bicycles that we gave away in a raffle. I certainly didn't want to forget them. And then our Santa Claus uh, from um, the Edison Credit Union. I certainly don't want to forget George, so I just want to say thanks to those people personally. They also donated Christmas trees to the families. Um, also, Manny and all your staff, thank you for the canned food drive that you did along with the school district um, yes. this last Saturday. We had a, how many families did we have coming to pick up? 400 families. We had 400 families coming to the park to pick up uh, their, their dinner for, for the holidays. It was a wonderful event. We always uh, collaborate with the school district, so thank you for all of those of you who donated. All righty, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Any, any other announcements? No? All right, so at this point, the first uh, presentation that we have, Mr. Reyes, uh, he, I, I was informed that he is not in uh, today, so uh, he will be rescheduled for a future uh, meeting as well. Just one, okay. All right, real quick before I go on, I want to just make an announcement. Um, uh, as required by the government code, section 54952.3, members of the city council are also members of the board of directors of the housing authority and finance authority which are concurrently uh, convening with the city council this evening. And each council member is paid an additional stipend of $30 for attending the housing authority meeting and $50 for attending the finance authority meeting. So thank you very much, City Attorney. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go over to the retirement recognition for Ball Park Police Officer, Mr. James R. Kobach. So Mr. Kobach, is he here? He's right there. Where? Oh, all right. So let, let's go ahead and uh, just stand right there first at the lecture, and then we'll bring you up here. Uh, do we have the bio for... Uh, Mr. Kobach? Should be, oh, it's written on that black. Okay, all right, so that's that's cool. All right, let me bring it out here. So I'll read this before we bring him up here, which reads, um, James R. Kobach, a police officer, city of Baldwin Park, in recognition of our, your outstanding 32 years of service with the Baldwin Park Police Department and your commitment to the residents, community members, colleagues, and all the families you help. The City Council thanks you for your dedication and wish you a prosperous future and happy retirement. But before you come up here, I just want to let everyone know that uh, Officer James Kolbach uh, was definitely an exemplary officer, a, a part of this community. 
and extremely loved by a lot of residents in Ball Park that he literally reached out to, not only in the community, but throughout the school. So just want to say uh, that you've done a phenomenal job, and we'll never forget uh, your contribution uh, to the city of Baldwin Park. He's 32 years is a long time, and of course, you've done a lot of positive things that uh, we'll never forget. So thank you on behalf of the city of Baldwin Park. All right, so at this point, we'll have him come up here, present him the plaque. Can you bring your family up here? Mr. Mayor. Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Sorry about that, Chief. Yes, sir. That's okay. In addition to the plaque, I see that James has brought his wife, Terry, and his four boys. Uh, I think it's Jeremy, Joshua, Jared, and Joe. His four boys. Can you hear me? Yeah. You know what? Get on another mic. What's up with that mic? Testing. One, two, three. How's that? Thank you. In addition to the... Mr. Mayor, in addition to the plaque that uh, you've got, we have a little present for Jim. Oh. It's, uh, this is what we call, it's a tradition in law enforcement, and it's called a uh, shadow box. And what the shadow box does is it's kind of a snapshot of his entire career over the 31, 32 years that Jim has worked for the police department. And we offer that him as a gift of remembrance for the final work that he's done with our department and all the different assignments that he's had. Uh, there's a uh, little plaque on there, Mr. Mayor. If you'd read it, please. Uh, your eyesight's a little bit better than mine. I don't know about that one. If they'll see that in a minute. Can you read that, Mr. Mayor? Let me put my glasses on, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> All right, so it reads, uh, with over 31 years of service, we present this a shadow box to Officer Jim Colback for his dedication to duty, his commitment to serve, and the fulfillment of, of his pledge to the citizens of Baldwin Park and the Baldwin Park Police Department. Congratulations, December 12th. 1986 to October 6th, 2018. Awesome. Wow. Thank you. Where's Carrillo? Oh. All right, we're going to have some words. Come on up here. Can I have you? Please, hopefully, won't turn off. Go back, sir. The mic's yours. Oh. Here, I'll hold that. I'll hold that. Here. <laughs> I just want to thank you. It's been a, an adventure working here. I was here over half of my life, so um, a lot, of, a lot of great things have happened here. A lot of I taught the Dare program for three years, so a lot of kids will come up to me as adults and say, "You're my Dare teachers." Thank you. This is my wife, Terry, and my. Two of my four sons, Joshua and Jared. Okay, who's got my glasses? All right. 
All right, so the next one that we have is going to be... Okay, the next item that we have here is a housing department presentation. So who is hosting this? Thank you very much. Mr. Benjamin, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. It's my pleasure um, as your newly installed uh, community development director to give you this presentation tonight. Although I've been at the post, although I've been at the post only a few weeks, um, again, it's a pr pr privilege to uh, give you this presentation. I would consider these comments because of uh, my um, early amount of time here as preliminary as we move along and I'm able to assess staffing levels, get to know the community uh, better and um, mature in my position. Um, I look forward to future discussions on, on housing. I wanted to recognize the housing, just quickly, the housing staff they don't come to council meetings very often. Could you just stand, uh, uh, led by Susie Duelas? Hey. Thank you very much. The housing, the housing division uh, does a, a quiet job daily of doing uh, what we tend to call uh, God's work in the industry because housing people and helping people with housing is, is very difficult work. And, it takes uh, not only intelligence and hard work and dedication, but also a lot of heart. So I want to thank them. We have a number of uh, housing. Uh, oh. So we have a number of housing uh, programs and projects in the city. And one of the uh, slides that didn't uh, didn't make it up here, it appears, is the fact that uh, currently the city of Baldwin Park does have over a thousand affordable housing types of units in the city. So uh, the city does have an established record of providing affordable housing to first-time home buyers, home improvement rehabilitation loans. We've utilized the neighborhood stabilization program. We uh, help build the Metro Village, this beautiful project right here next to City Hall. Um, we own and manage the McNeil Manor for senior citizens. And there's also a number of HUD-administered units, such as Ramona Park, Fraser Park, Syracuse Park. Um, these are other projects that uh, are reside in our city, that are in our city. We do not oversee them but they do provide affordable housing to our, to our residents. So the idea of, I believe, of this discussion and as we move forward is to grow our affordable housing program in the future, but we already have a lot to be proud of. And here's a few pictures of what, of what those, some of those projects look like. Um, just as a quick reminder, before uh, we get into housing, there's a lot of rules and regulations uh, when we do housing and when we work with HUD programs. And so this slide just talks a little bit about how we need to always make sure we're in compliance with federal, state, and, and state regulations. There's plans and reports, environmental reviews, annual audits. There's uh, project oversight, including um, prevailing wage, Davis-Bacon compliance reviews, pr procurement uh, compliance and administration of, of loan portfolios. And that's the that's the day-to-day the -day work that the housing staff does for us. The CDBG program, I think we're mostly familiar, or we're all mostly familiar with the Community Development Block Rec program. As we know, we've used it in the past for, like many cities, we've used it in the past for a number of, of, of programs, but we can use it uh, for housing rehab and we can also use it for new development. The HOME program is also another HUD program, uh, can also be used for affordable housing. Um, when we do that, we need to commit the money within two years and spend it within five years. So we need to make sure that when we do projects that we do them in a diligent fashion. Left over from our um, redevelopment uh, agency days, we also have some housing uh, set-aside funds, what we used to call set-aside funds available and those can assist up to low and moderate income uh, families, and we can use those for a number of programs as well. 
We also administer the density bonus projects in our city that don't, don't involve any funding but do provide affordable housing. Before coming to the city of Baldwin Park, I used to always read and hear about the, the Baldwin Park Housing Authority. Uh, it's kind of an honor and pr privilege to, to be here now working with the city and, and seeing it firsthand. Um, the city of Baldwin Park, uh, for those that don't uh, know that, know it, uh, it, administers the Section 8 housing uh, program for the city of Baldwin Park, Monrovia, West Covina, El Monte, South El Monte, and Covina. Um, currently, there are 444 households being serviced through the Section 8 voucher program. 118 are Baldwin Park households and 238 are elderly households. We have a waiting list of 2,000 applicants uh, with 18, around 1,800 uh, pending and over 350 of those residents are from Baldwin Park. <coughs> we also administer a minimal amount of project-based units in the city of Covina and we also provide annual inspections to ensure compliance for all the units that we service. <coughs> As I as as uh, I as director and moving forward and analyzing the department along with the city manager, we're going to be looking at many things. One of them is the Baldwin Park Housing Authority payment standards. Um, HUD provides flexibility in how we uh, apply these payment standards, and generally speaking, um, we can provide more flexibility, pay more rent, and and. And this might attract um, <clears throat> more uh, uh, landlords to the program. Um, but also, uh, we, we need to also take into consideration the quality of the housing that's being provided. So this is one of many, many factors that we're going to be looking at as we move forward in, in addressing the program. <coughs> Measure H. So our... Uh, Friends over at the Parks and Community Services uh, Department, and I see Eureko here and, and President and staff from that department, they spearheaded an effort <clears throat> to get a $50,000 planning grant in 2016. And this uh, plan um, involves stakeholder meetings and uh, community support, and it developed a citywide homeless plan aligning um, <clears throat> the Baldwin Park with the Los Angeles Homeless Initiative strategies. <clears throat> the goals of the grant involve coordinating local efforts to respond to homelessness, prevent individuals and family from becoming homeless, connect case management and local services, <coughs> expand access to work workforce development programs to increase employment, and explore opportunities to increase the number of units. Because of this excellent work uh, done by the Parks and Community Services along with the housing um, staff and the Community Development Department, we have many opportunities that now will be afforded to the City of Baldwin Park in the future. Um, I'm going to mention a few here. I know they're hard to read, but just to go over them quickly, the Los Angeles County Homeless Plan Implementation Grant, uh, we just <clears throat> recently uh, submitted two applications in uh, December. We One of the applications is a city micro level and the other one is a macro level where we will attempt to uh, partner with our neighboring cities of El Monte South El Monte, and South El Monte. <clears throat> and we will be looking at the, increasing the supply of interim and permanent housing for people experiencing homelessness. So <clears throat> we're hopeful that we're going to get these grants and this will begin to uh, bolster our staffing and uh, levels to help us, uh, uh, you know, address homelessness. HEAP funding uh, is another uh, grant opportunity that was just released. We haven't even had a chance to apply to it yet, <clears throat> but this will allow us to look at rapid rehousing and prevention uh, services and also interim housing uh, services. It's all about keeping people off the streets. It's as simple as that. There, you know, there's all kinds of terminology and and <clears throat> alphabet soup that we have here in this uh, how, world of housing. But really, we just have to remember: all we're trying to do is keep people, individuals, and families, especially children, off the streets. 
There's also the San Gabriel Valley COG, which is interested in creating a regional housing trust fund. And so we're talking to them about the potential, potentiality of that. <coughs> I personally has been, have been involved in the, the uh, development of hundreds of affordable housing units throughout my career. So it'll be my honor as, as your new community development director to, to uh, work in this community and share my knowledge and what I've learned. Um, a lot of this, the, this is a list of the types of affordable housing uh, funds that are available and financing programs that are available. Um, I've used uh, several of them in my, in my career. Um, affordable housing is not easy. Like I said, it's, it's, we call it God's work because it's not easy. It takes a team. It takes dedication. And um, as I sit here a, a month into the job, I'm seeing that I think we may have the potentiality to really tackle this problem um, because we have all the missing pieces. I'll get into those a little later. But just to talk about <clears throat> some of the tools out there, we have the Affordable Housing and Sustainable Communities uh, Program. That's called the Cap and Trade Program. So that's something that we are very happy in the affordable housing field that the uh, Governor Brown solidified that program in the beginning part of this year. And so that's going <clears> to <throat> provide a steady uh, supply of affordable housing funding for affordable housing in the future. SB2 is, provides technical assistance to local governments to update planning documents and zoning ordinances. Proposition 1 and 2 <clears throat> provide, well, Proposition 1 provides programs for new development and rehab. Proposition 2 provides housing for uh, funds for housing for those with mental illness at risk of being homeless. The Choice <clears throat> Neighborhoods Program is a HUD program. And this is going to be coming out in, in two phases, a planning grant and an implementation grant. And it takes a look at, it's kind of looking at uh, neighborhoods holistically and making sure that <clears throat> if we, if and when we invest in housing, that we have also public services, health and safety, and active transportation in the area. So that's something that could be a very nice fit for our, our community and our, our, our um, grant writer uh, that works with us will, will be taking a look at that program. We have 4% <clears throat> and 9% tax credit allocations committee uh, tax credits. Again, all this stuff should be foreign to you. I, I don't think we've done a lot of this in this city, but, but again, I have personally in other cities. These are excellent tools uh, that we can, um, uh, these are, this is the equity. See, when you build a project, when you build affordable housing, it's like anything. Someone's got to put money in to make it work at the beginning. And so these 4% and 9% tax credits, these are the equity that drive a project. And then later we get the temporary financing or the bank financing for the construction. But this 4 and 9% programs that have been around for decades, these are the things that really make it happen. And, and I'm giving you a very quick overview. I'd love to talk about this in more detail and show examples. But I think tonight's just meant to be more of a quick uh, presentation. The other thing is we do have some land resources. So we, have, uh, we can make city residual receipt loans, which basically means that we can, instead of gifting land to a developer, we can uh, uh, loan or, or provide the land to the developer, but also on a, on a loan basis that if and when residual seats come back from the project that the city is uh, paid back for the, the land. We're also going to look at the Los Angeles Community Development Commission that has a number of resources. <clears throat> oh, here's our housing portfolio. I thought it was in the beginning of the presentation. It's more towards the end. So there's a, there's a list to be proud of, uh, over 1,000 units. And we can talk about those more in the future. But we've already, we have already provided a lot of affordable housing in, in the city, Baldwin Park. And just to end, uh, our, our, our housing division has been um, uh, recognized in, in multiple ways. Uh, HUD has asked us to be a panel speaker at Innovative Development of Affordable Housing Workshop. We're commonly um, uh, referred. HUD refers other cities to us to seek best practices for home and CDBG projects. 
<clears throat> our staff does have all the laundry list of staff certifications here. And we've been awarded a number of uh, projects uh, by the California Housing Association. And, and we are also um, recognized by the city council for multiple year high performing rating agency. So uh, what we've done with our section eight program and other HOPE programs has been recognized uh, by HUD as being very high quality and administered in a very professional manner. And I can tell you that's not the case in all cities having worked in, in many cities. I'm gonna close my, my, my presentation, my comments by just saying that um, there's four kind of parameters to, to doing anything uh, in, in a city, um, but especially affordable housing. Um, to get affordable housing done, you need, you need a good economy because in a good economy, um, more taxes are generated and that creates more uh, housing resources for affordable housing. So we're, we're still in a good economy. Um, you need to have the st technical staff and know how to get affordable housing done. I think uh, I think we're getting there. I think with the the, the work that the Parks and Community Services uh, Department has done to date, housing division staff has done to date, and and yours truly here that's ready to uh, roll up the sleeves and get to work on affordable housing and other matters. I think we're starting to get close to having the technical staff uh, to get this done. We also have to have a supportive community though, because without a supportive community, affordable housing is, is impossible. And we also have to have political will. So uh, if we can put those four pieces together, uh, I can assure you, because I've seen it in the past, that affordable housing will happen uh, in the city of Baldwin Park. Thank you, and I can um, here to answer any questions or, or uh, pass the questions to other technical staff if need be. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Council members, have any questions? All right, yes, Councilmember Parr Hernandez. Thank you. Appreciate it, Ben. Um, excellent presentation. Um, just a quick question, if you can, perhaps. Uh, in early January or, or and so forth, can you uh, perhaps just bring back the, the draft citywide <coughs> homeless plan? Um, I, I just want to I want to make sure that uh, that plan is incorporating not only the various uh, subcategories that you have for the heat program, but that we're also incorporating the um, the school district into our application um, as we're doing that and as we're creating the master plan because. Um, as you've stated earlier, uh, you have quite a bit of uh, students um, that are uh, potential for uh, homeless risk and so forth. So um, if that's something we can do. And then in regards to the rehabilitation program, I know you didn't speak too much uh, on that, but uh, that would be somewhere if we could perhaps look at expanding or adding more uh, funding towards that because we can then look uh, as a citywide towards uh, individuals on fixed incomes to help uh, beautify their homes or assist their homes uh, that might be in dilapidated uh, manner or whatever the case might be in, the, in that sense. Um, but those are just considerations for, for you and the rest of your, your team to look at. Um, but if we can certainly uh, discuss some of that stuff in back in January, uh, you know, and again, in regards based on the timeline of your application, we'd like to see what that is before we submit that if, if possible. Thank you. Uh, thank you. At this point, uh, Councilmember uh, Avila. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. I look forward to meeting with you so we can discuss further. I don't have the name of the place at this time, but I know in Pasadena they have affordable housing. I just visited. I can't recall the name, but it was beautiful. You would have never known it was affordable housing. And in that affordable housing, they have the rehabilitation program for the families that are homeless, and they come here and they get a training. They provide babysitting for the families. Uh, homework assistance, so it's a full program, not only for them to have a place to live, but also to get them trained so they can get on their feet. So they start off maybe at a minimal rent due, and then they start basing it based on their income. So I look forward to working with you. I will bring that program to you so we can talk about it. Maybe we can bring something like that to our community and involve our school district, like Paul said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, Councilman Ricardo Pacheco. Yes, uh, for the Director of Housing. I'm can you go back to where you you kind of went through that uh, that slide quickly where it showed how many housing pro there you go that one um, so of, of the first time home buyer programs how many are actually successful do you have any any stats on that I, I know people apply but or is that the number of actual uh, yes that is the number of uh, first time home buyers that we have assisted but it probably the number probably goes back into quite a number of years. Mm. Okay. okay. So it doesn't reflect current 20. 
Yeah, we, we, we haven't, uh, uh, the, the first time home buyer program ebbs and flows because uh, in, in today's market right now, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but in a, in a different market, it does. So that number represents going back probably at least 10 years or so, the number of first time home buyers we've assisted. Okay, and about how many um, affordable units you say we have total? Uh, the bottom there, it's I, I oh, overall there over a thousand. Per thousand, or okay. All right. And is there an interest from developers to continue to do family affordable housing, or is or is the market different right now? Absolutely. Uh, right now, as of with all the new housing resources, now is a great time, and developers are interested. I I don't think they know, uh, and we need to vocalize our interest to them. I, I, I think I can tell you that's number one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, land resources are always difficult, but that's that's mm -hmm. just part of the puzzle we need to solve. Okay. And did the city still have funding to help out in those types of yes, projects? Yes, we, we do have uh, home funds available and CDBG funds available for, um, in particular, uh, home funds available for um, affordable housing. Okay. okay, thank you. I think I just want to say real quick that I think a good example of a affordable type of housing is this project, uh, the uh, Metro Village. It's unfortunate once the administration changed in the White House, funds were cut or else we would have continued on with an additional one. And of course, there's a necessity for, for, uh, for, for housing, and we know that. There's a shortage uh, throughout the county. So Ballon Park doesn't make Ballon Park unique. There just, there just simply is a necessity for this. Uh, well, for that matter, throughout the state of California, all 58 counties. All right, so at this point, any other questions? Okay, if not, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the following presentations before we get into the public communication. The next one is uh, Baker Associates uh, Public Art Advisory Ball Park uh, Digital Marquee presentation. Is that to change out the marquee? Uh, no. No, Mayor. Was that the marquee throughout the city type? No, this is an update to a new project currently in our CIP. This is for um, uh, just giving you an update on a uh project that entails uh, an overarching, over-the-street sign that includes a public art component to it. Beautiful. Um, so it's a, it's so beautiful. It's a sign that uh, is uh, envisioned to go over the street with an e-reader e or marquee type sign. Uh, tonight there is no um, action uh, being requested from the council. We would just like to introduce the public art team. They have put together a presentation and they will be discussing some thoughts on their approach. Uh, there is um, a lot of community involvement that is planned for this project and we're planning to, um, in, the, in these community meetings, bring in a lot of local public artists to help out and, and sort of inform the project. But I'd like to hand it over to Claudia and Franca uh, who will be discussing uh, their approach to the uh, project. Good evening. Good evening, City Council, uh, Mayor. Good evening. Good evening, residents of Baldwin Park. Um, so we are here tonight. Uh, my name is Claudia Reisenberger. My name is Franka Dienert. Um, uh, together we form Merge Conceptual Design, um, an art practice focused on public art. We are working on this project together with uh, Beatrice Parker from um, Parker Public Art Advisory. Unfortunately, Beatrice is sick today, so uh, there's two parts to our presentation. The first one we will be uh, presenting on behalf of Beatrix, and then the second one is uh, showing some reference projects that illustrate our approach to public art on, uh, and also our approach to, um, to collaboration with community in, in various forms. Uh, and hopefully that can give you a little bit of an idea of how we will um, you know, plan to approach this uh, project. So uh, just uh, briefly, as, as Sam already introduced, uh, the project was brought to us as um, basically a gateway pr uh, project for um, Baldwin Park. The idea is that there is multiple elements that should be integrated into this gateway, uh, but the gateway would not simply be a sign uh, for Baldwin Park. It would have a, a public art uh, component. So here just... Um, some uh, examples that you know don't uh, necessarily reflect or do not re reflect what we're proposing for this site, but just different ideas of of how other communities have approached uh, similar topics. Um, a gateway can always you know create pride in a neighborhood. It, it is uh, a front door 
uh, to a city, and so it it's, gives an important first impression of uh, where people have arrived. Uh, this is, you know, including art in, uh, in any of, of such projects obviously enhances this from a simple, you know, signage type of project into something uh, quite a bit more appealing and meaningful and that can also really represent the community spirit on various levels. Um, one piece that was um, to be integrated into this uh, project is also a, a digital marquee that can be used for um, you know, convey information uh, related to the city. So uh, there's obviously many different ways of um, you know, working with digital uh, information as well. Um, then this is a presentation that was uh, put together by uh, the Public Works uh, Department to just, you know, also show like, okay, this is, this is the type of um, situation we are trying to create, but we are trying to uh, incorporate public art. So these samples do not incorporate public art, but they are similar gateway situations. And um, so our, you know, project considerations are really to think about how can we meaningfully represent uh, the city in, um, in such a marquee, who is our core audience. Um, and um, I think uh, an important um, kind of outreach component for us will be to really try to understand what are the, you know, the stories that can influence the design, what is the unexpected, the interest, the fun, the meaningful that can represent the community. And uh, then obviously also we'll have to examine uh, spatial relationships um, of the marquee um, uh, to its physical surroundings. Uh, it will be a rather large structure if it spans a multi-lane street. So there will be engineering involved and, and definitely needs a sophisticated design also on a structural level. Um, so far, we've uh, discussed several uh, location options with um, the Public Works Department. Um, one of the uh, kind of preferred ones seemed to be on Ramona Boulevard, maybe between Mains uh, Avenue and Bogart Avenue. Uh, we also discussed uh, May, uh, Ramona Boulevard between Syracuse and Derb. Um, and then Main Avenue between Los Angeles Street and Clark Street and uh, Baldwin Park Boulevard between Tracy Avenue and uh, Francis Quito Avenue. So that would be something to examine more in the next step to, and then also you know, work with community and, and with you to, um, to pinpoint the location. Um, also depends a little bit on you know, the, the scale and, and budget numbers to see whether you know, we have the potential of creating two related uh, markers or just one. Um, so the, 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 the different spatial configurations we discussed, uh, there will be a LED sign, um, then also a, you know, a, a more kind of explicit font that says City of Baldwin Park, but then uh, an important uh, element will be public art, which is not uh, represented in these drawings yet. So uh, there's different ways of working with spatial relationships between those uh, elements. Um, one possibility would be to actually uh, create the, um, the digital sign kind of as a, a vertical element next to the more this welcoming arch uh, that will uh, span the street. Um, and so as we are going into the second part of our presentation, we will be showing several uh, projects that we've worked on as public artists. So now. Now comes kind of the public art uh, side into the whole equation. Um, and we've laid out a kind of a process to engage with the community. One thing that we always find very important in our work as public artists is to have a you know, really meaningful dialogue with the community to identify what really can be a, you know, a, a contribution in this context. And um, so we will need, um, obviously, uh, to, to keep working with, with the public works uh, director to identify uh, who are the, the key stakeholders or community groups, uh, specific people that we should uh, contact with who might have particular knowledge or particular, uh, you know, a, a particular weight and, and input into this project. Um, through this, we will establish a working group, which would be a, a core group of stakeholders, 
but then also uh, create like an open um, kind of an open uh, strategy to to plan community meetings to invite the general public to um, you know give input to the project and and for us to learn about the community um, an important piece for us will be to really try to understand who are you know who are potential artists in the community that we could collaborate with. Um, we will show some some uh, images in a moment where we've worked with artists in, in various communities and in various levels. This is a large scale piece, uh, and it needs a you know it needs a certain experience to to create a, a public art piece uh, of that scale that can. Um, you know, be structurally sound, that, uh, that can be fabricated in a timely manner, but at the same time, we really welcome input from, from people that may not have the, uh, the expertise in, in these type of public art pieces, but, but could still contrib uh, contribute in a different way. Um, one piece that we've also done in the past is to actually work uh, with schools and school children uh, to either try to help us identify topics or even, even in some fabrication um, aspects of uh, projects, and we'll, we'll show examples. But here comes the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> Time for the fun part. So this is a project we did in San Jose. It's for, uh, uh, for several, like 20 um, bus stations. And um, so the, we designed like the overarching like uh, theme for the art piece, and then um, so there were actually 10 stations, always two shelters in the different directions. For each one has a different theme. Um, each one of these stations always has a floor, like a wall and the ceiling. And it was really important for us to reach out to the community and find these very special stories about the community so that the community feels like really that their stories are told. And for us as public artists, it helps incredible to find these identity point because it helps with maintenance. Uh, like you have less graffiti and less other things if you find that voice and that uh, story what, is, um, what gets reflected. So this is like, for instance, one community outreach we had in San Jose was um, to a Portuguese uh, senior center where the ladies showed us how to uh, do crochet, crochet and um, later that crochet work was applied in the station itself. Or like this was um, next to the station was an African American church, and so the hats of the ladies were photographed and then it, uh, displayed at the station. And this was because uh, San Jose is the capital of the lowriders. This was close to a, a center of lowriding, and so we. Uh, had an outreach um, to artists there, and actually the ceiling in that station is done by, uh, with car paint uh, by one of the artists uh, of um, the lowrider community. And this is the station for the um, Heritage Museum there. So we found an artist who was really good in papel picado, and were able to um, get his art uh, transferred into a large papel picado, but then got into the in like as you see again, like into the concrete, into the glass, and into the um, aluminum ceiling there. A, a project we uh, did a few years ago in uh, La Puente at Allen J. Martin Park. Uh, it's a quite different project here. Our task was to just kind of create an overall uh, color concept uh, for the park. It, it previously was kind of this gray brown park, and you know it had a lot of problems with graffiti. So we really wanted to turn around the atmosphere of that park and, and uh, ended up choosing very bright colors actually in collaboration with the community uh, who was you know, quite, quite ready to embrace a, a much brighter color scheme. And we created a, a scheme of circles because we noticed that there were already a, a, a bunch of circular elements in the park. And so uh, created this kind of cheerful pattern, applied circles uh, throughout the park and then worked with, um, actually uh, worked with, with the community to identify which colors are associated with what type of elements, like pink would be you know, a heart or a rose or candy or a cheerleader. And so we came, uh, the, the kids came up with these different icons. We created stencils uh, out of these icons and then applied stencils together with, uh, with uh, teenagers uh, in that local community to these different circles. So there was a certain 
uh, certain rules they had to follow and you know, which sensors are applied with which colors to which circles, but it was actually quite a, a, quite a fun day. Uh, and um, one, one part of our strategy was there, uh, there was also to um, uh, keep those stencils and, and keep using the uh, pattern of the circle to, uh, to work with, you know, whenever they needed to overcoat graffiti, which uh, the graffiti problem actually declined quite a bit uh, after, after we completed this uh, paint project. So um, I think that's that. And then just lastly, I think there's uh, two uh, quick projects that we wanted to show that, that show kind of archway situations, even though quite different than a, a gateway would be to the city of Baldwin Park, but uh, you know, big sculptural pieces that we've completed. Um, this one is in Scottsdale on a road over a Warhead Wash. And it's this series of, uh, of arches that are bent and twisted and, and create kind of an interesting pattern as, as people go through it or drive under it, um, bringing kind of an awareness over this wash that is actually uh, kind of hard to see from the street. And this is a, uh, a water project in downtown Los Angeles where we um, cladded a bridge in a way with uh, um, glass, and uh, you would not think that it's glass actually. And uh, there is, um, what is it called? Like a. It's a reflective traffic film. It's a reflected traffic film, and it's done in such a matter that uh, it's um, like when you drive in the car, the, uh, the horses actually start to go up over it because of um, how we fragmented the picture in itself, but you don't see when you're actually right in front of it. So it's a little bit of a mirage, and it plays with you when you actually drive. And so we were also thinking of uh, the big um, gateway project here in a way is like we have there are all these different kind of perceptions how you approach it, approach that gateway. It's like you walk by, you drive by, you are high in the car, you are lower in the car. So that all needs to uh, be thought of by creating that art piece. So you can see it a little bit here, the strategy of having basically it's an, a lenticular um, illusion, you have these different most motion sta stages of, of a horse overlapping and as you drive through you see a different mo motion stage every time and so uh, the image appears to, uh, to, you know, the horses appear to run basically. Um, the reason why ch we chose the horse that was actually a part of our, our um, um, beginning kind of starting point was that there was a desire since this is an, a kind of a gateway into Chinatown to use an image uh, from the Chinese zodiac. So the developer chose uh, that he wanted to do something with horses, and so that's, that's uh, what became of it. That's the end of the presentation. All righty, thank you very much. Council members have any questions? That, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to meeting up again because I, I think it's exciting for us to be able to blend this type of um, uh, project uh, throughout the community, of course. Uh, through the entrance and through the exits. So thank you very much. All righty, thank you very much. All right, so at this point we have no further presentations, so at this point I will open up the public hearing. Uh, anyone wishing to speak? Yeah, approximately three minutes. Good evening. Thanks, Dave. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Council members, staff and residents. My name is Robert Cruz. I'm the Public Affairs Manager for the Southern California Robert. Gas Company. Brother covering the city of Baldwin Park. As you know, SoCal Gas distributes natural gas to the many residents and businesses in Baldwin Park, allowing them an affordable, reliable, and abundant energy source to heat their homes and businesses to cook their meals and heat their water. It is the energy of choice for most of us and is part of a balanced energy portfolio and which your constituents enjoy. I am here tonight to raise your awareness of an ongoing issue in California which many people are unaware. California wants to electrify everything and upset this balanced portfolio. A recent proposal, Assembly Bill 3232, which did not pass the legislature this year, would have required all new buildings built after 2022 to be all electric. It would have required the existing buildings to be retrofitted to be all electric by 2030. While it did not pass, you can be assured that a similar proposal will be forthcoming in the future. The proposals to, are to force you to electrify your home and being are being made in the name of global warming, reducing greenhouse gas emissions and carbon emissions. While this is very admirable, a cost-benefit analysis can't justify such a drastic action, and customers are the ones who will pay. 
Please think about how much you pay for electricity every summer as you heat at, for your heating bills in the, in the winter, your electric bills in the summer. Now imagine what your bills would be if your homes or businesses were all electric to do all those things. For example, it would cost $7,200 to retrofit buildings for new electric appliances, which does not include the cost of new appliances. That's just to retrofit your home or, or, or business. Your utility bills would probably go up by $388, which would be an increase in your electric bills. $388. Let me be clear, though. SoCal Gas does not oppose electricity. If you want to use only electric appliances or drive an electric vehicle, that's your choice. But don't make, take away that choice from those who want to offer other sources of energy. I'm alerting you that the balance is th threatened, and with it, the economic stability of families and business could be threatened forcing homeowners to place their natural gas appliances. There is an alternative. Biogas, renewable natural gas is available now. We're putting renewable gas into our uh, basically CNG stations, which I believe the city is, has one, as well as other companies are now using renewable natural gas. Yeah, the point is you shouldn't have to choose between what some decision makers in California oh. believe to be is right in terms of what your families can afford. If just 60% of the gas we deliver to customers comes from renewable gas, it will have the same effect on greenhouse gas emissions as electrifying all of California and by achieving the same goal. Thank you very much for your attention. Feliz Navidad y un prospero año nuevo. Thank you, Robert. Nice to see you, my friend. Good to Appreciate see you too, that. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, we'll allow public communication. You have three minutes. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Torres. I'm a resident of West Covina. I'm here just to summarize a, a criminal incident that happened, uh, essentially to inform you on uh, November 27th at the New LA Fitness, uh, my wife's purse was stolen, uh, and from discussions with the manager there, uh, it's an often occurrence at that LA Fitness. Um, I know that's a new development and we frequent it often, but ever since that incident we've uh, kind of shied away, especially my wife. So I did reach out to Shannon, the city manager. Uh, I was also contacted by uh, Sergeant Patino and Detective Villalobos. So I did file a police report with my wife. They were very helpful and I appreciate all the assistance thus far. Uh, I just wanted to come here to let you know about the incident. And I know that um, it happens often. I know it discourages residents and visitors from patronizing businesses in Baldwin Park. Uh, I know that uh, you welcome and appreciate the feedback, so that's also why I came. Uh, so my hope uh, is essentially for the person to hopefully be arrested. Um, once he stole the purse, he purchased 700, I think around $700 uh, from the neighboring Food for Less and Target. So there is a paper trail because he used a credit card. And in discussions with uh, the detective, he said he'll be able to identify the footage and hopefully uh, find some leads and identify the person. So um, in closing, I, I just think the ultimate goal is to eventually create a more inviting uh, and safer environment for residents and visitors. Uh, and consequently, uh, continue revitalizing the commercial and residential areas because minor crimes like this, um, major minor crimes, sometimes might not give in, uh, the same attention as felonies. But I think it deters a lot of people from visiting Baldwin Park. Um, so I appreciate your attention tonight, and I plan to keep you apprised of the investigation uh, in the coming weeks. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Torres. All righty. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Elvia Naranjo, and I'm here with a group of parents representing uh, Foster Elementary from Baldwin Park, um, right across from the LA Fitness, as he just mentioned. Um, we are here today, and we're gathered today to express our point of view with this new construction site at the 7-Eleven and a gas station only 97 adult steps away from an elementary school. Um, I will briefly do in three points say why we don't agree with this new construction site. Uh, first is traffic congestion. Our uh, Foster Elementary has a front and a back entrance to this school, and both of those entrances are dead-end streets, which limited, limits uh, vehicles uh, being able to drop off students there. With this new construction, we're already looking at more congestion. Um, sometimes 
Uh, even myself, I have to be able to take my students only living two streets away uh, 20 minutes earlier to school just for them to get on, um, to school on time and not be late um, cause, uh, because of other consequences that I could have. Um, so traffic congestion is probably the most to be concerned about. Um, also there, around that um, our area, there's a lot of apartment complexes, so a lot of the street parking is taken by those residents. Also, uh, along with that, the Metrolink runs through the back of our school, which also kind of limits our exposure or are, are able to get to that school site. And my second point is ensuring the safety of our kids. Um, I know we can not, we could monitor who we sell alcohol to, um, especially the 7-Eleven, we can monitor who we sell alcohol, alcohol to, but we cannot monitor that person's actions. And being so close to a school, um, we don't know if those people have drug addictions or they're, um, if they have other occurrences with the law or they might be sex offenders. And this type of uh, businesses attracts a lot of homeless, already being a problem around that area in our school site. So, um, and for lastly, my point, uh, my last point, I want to talk about air quality. Um, I know that maybe at the beginning we won't have a lot of effects on that, but in the long run, we're looking at students maybe having cough, uh, chest congestions, asthma, breathing problems because of the air quality that they're going to be having. So maybe now we won't see that, but later in the future, through the experience of six years, my, my, my kids are a preschool and a second grader, so they still have four years there. So maybe along the long run, we'll be able to see those effects. So I just... Um, we would like you guys to reconsider that, um, think about the safety of our kids um, and the position that that puts us as parents to speak out for them. So thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Mulan. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Montserrat Tanker. I am a student at Foster Elementary. I am in sixth grade and I am here to protest the 7-Eleven that is probably going to be built near our school. So I hear, right here I have my brother and some of his friends. I, next year, will be attending middle school, but my brother here will be, he's barely in kindergarten, so he'll be going on to first and second grade. And with if we built the 7-Eleven near our school, my brother and some of the, all of the students here may have some problems with like the gas. And I've noticed that there's, like, right across the street or somewhere near, there's also another gas station, so we don't really need more, another gas station. <laughs> and I'm, well, usually when I go to liquors or 7-Elevens or anything like that, there's a lot of homeless there. So maybe that can cause us to go to maybe some lockdowns, code red, and that would be very dangerous for our students here since some we can't trust some homeless because some of them can be drug addicted or they just stay there, and sometimes you don't know if you can trust them, and maybe they will come out around to our campus, and that will lead our school into a lockdown, code red, or maybe code yellow. Either way, that would still be dangerous for our students. And... We need a, a, the alcohol that will be given sometimes, like in 7-Elevens. You don't know if, some, if like sometimes students will like see people with alcohol, and maybe sometimes students will be walking around in the back gate. They will be looking at maybe how like our, the 7-Eleven will be selling some drugs or like bad things that is not appropriate for our students here. So. And I come here to protest because this is something that may be something that may be going wrong. And this is going to be a change if this happens for all the kids that are here. So I just come here to say that this is um, something that, not, that might not be okay for our school and, that, and for our students. Thank you. Hello, good evening. My name is Brenna Ramirez. I'm a fifth grade student at Foster Elementary School. And I came here to this meeting to protest because 
I don't think it's a good idea having a gasoline station and a 7-Eleven because the 7-Eleven will be containing alcohol and certain things that us kids shouldn't be um, looking at. Like, we shouldn't be knowing about those things because we're just little kids. So it isn't a good idea because alcohol, first of all, it's a bad influence for us little, well, little kids and us too. And then... For the gasoline station, what like all of all of our kids, we we won't be able to go outside because of the air con the air the condition of the air because it would be so bad for us um, because it it would affect us in so many reasons um, and that's it. Thank you for your time. Hello, uh, my name is Adriana Valdez. I am a parent at Foster. I have three young children. I have two, I'm sorry, this really upsets me, so I'm a little emotional. But I have three young children who love their school and really enjoy the community that it provides for them. Um, if you've ever spent time there, the staff is incredible. Um, the kids are, they know that they are so supported by their teachers, the administrators, everyone that steps foot in there. It's an incredibly positive environment um, for our children to be in. And to have the news that there is plans to put yet another gas station within feet of the environment where our kids are on a daily basis is really upsetting to me, and I'm here to protest it. Um, I want to thank you for starting off with the prayer because I feel like um, only divine intervention can put together all of the things that were spoken of prior to us coming up here um, with the housing authority and with the art project that is being presented. Um, I'm holding here a couple of plans. These are just two of at least a dozen plans that our gate students did ironically just like six or seven weeks ago for their proposal to what should go in that law. And a lot of the points that the artists touched on and that the housing authority guy touched on are points that they make. And the engagement of their community and having pride for their neighborhood is a big part of what they envision. Um, I pride myself, and I don't reside in Baldwin Park. However, my children come because it is a wonderful dual language program that is taught there. And I pride myself in having them there. I come from a family where a lot of my cousins are educators, and people in different cities um, strive to reach the level of education that Baldwin Park Unified offers. And they do so much with so little resources at times that I would imagine that as the leaders of this city, you would want to take the same amount of pride into the district that you guys have. Um, my, the kids have already spoken about, Elvia has already spoken about, um, the health issues and the safety concerns. Um, another concern of mine is that there's no transparency with the district, it seems like. Um, when I reached out to the district, there's nothing that they could really do or tell me, and they had found out in, in just a short amount of notice. So I want you to really take our voices and listen to every word that's coming out of our mouths because we care. And you have an opportunity here to look at the projects that these students have, have presented and have created and make their visions a reality. This is an opportunity for you guys to do something amazing for them. And all of the art that was being presented earlier could come from these children and these projects that they're already working on. And I urge you to really take the time to spend some time with these students and their ideas and the teachers, and you'll be impressed as I am. Thank you. What was your name again? Adriana Valdez. Adriana. Thank you, Adriana. Good evening, my name is Cassandra Moreno. Uh, my name is Joanna Terrazas. And we're here to protest about the environment. We don't want the 7-Eleven because they're gonna be selling liquor and cigarettes and people could be um, drinking right there and smoking and we don't want that because some kids have medical problems. My friend Leslie has asthma and she could barely even run. Um, and also in school, um, we're supposed to be feeling safe, but while um, our 7-Eleven and the gas stations being uh, added to our community, we're not going to be able to, 
to feel safe and we're gonna be alerted when there's lockdown because we do not know what's gonna be added to our environment and we're used to a type of environment where everyone's pleasant and nice and there's no drug addicts or there's no alcohol near us. But once that is added, we are going to be in a serious danger and we do not know what's expecting for us. <clears throat> we don't want it. Well, I already said why, but we uh, some students actually have like med really bad medical problems, and that could affect them. They could even go end up going to the hospital. That. Um, also, with the cigarettes and um, the gas station, the pollution in our air is not going to be safe for us to go out and do our, our 45 minutes daily of PE. We're not going to be able to feel safe when we go out to Reese's. And most of all, we're not going to be able to feel safe when we get to school. We're going to feel in harm, and we're not going to be able to f let ourselves free as usual. Thank you. That's all we wanted to say. All right, thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Council. My name is Silka Crosco, and I am also a foster parent uh, at Foster Elementary School. And like everybody else, we are here, to, of course myself, I am here to protest the, um, the construction of the 7-Eleven. And basically, we're just here asking all of you to help us protect our children. Like everybody stated before, we don't know what the short term or the long term effects of the gas station can cause to our children, but not only our children, it can also affect our staff. And if something happens to our staff, that's gonna cost our district thousands of dollars. Dollars that could be spent on our kids. Money that can be spent on our kids. And as we know, medical bills are very, very pricey. It's going to cost the district a lot of money. And that money, again, could be going to our kids. So please help us and don't take away from our kids. We just saw a 30-minute presentation on housing. How about we do that? Instead of trying to, yes, of course, build a 7-Eleven that's going to cause, that's going to create revenue to the city. Yes, it's going to cause revenue, but at what expense? And of course, like I said, it's at our children's expense. So we please ask you to please reconsider this. If we have to be coming every week, we have to be here, we will be here because we want to express our concern for our children. So we please ask to take that in reconsideration. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Rafael Lopez. This is actually my first time being at a council meeting here. I lived in Baldwin Park for about 20 years now. And my concern today, the reason why I came out today was earlier my car was broken into. Uh, this is already, I, I believe, a few incidents already that's already occurred in my neighborhood. I already had two of my vehicles already been hit, stolen. Uh, my parents' car has been broken into. Also, also want to address some of the issues that goes on in the street areas. Uh, the constant street racing um, and you know after speaking to the officer today that actually came to, the, to my home he explained that there's a lack of police officers so that's something that I'm just wondering you know what can be done in order to increase um, the number of officers um, I'm also willing to you know speak with you guys in regards to it you know of any way that I can be you know of, of help I'm willing to you know put the time and effort into it as well I believe if you want something done, you know what, you gotta, you gotta put some work into it as well. So like I said, those are some of my issues that are going on. Like, like I said, the thing for me that hurt me was that you know, my car was broken into and I feel like violated. Um, the reason why, because my work laptop was stolen, which is I work with mental health. So that prevented for me from today from actually doing my job of going out there and helping you know, people who actually need help. So there's a reason why that motivated me to be here today to see what can be done about that. It's like I said, it's an ongoing thing. I feel like it's an increasing problem in the city of Baldwin Park. You know, there's a lot of great things at Baldwin Park, but there's also things that need to be addressed as well. So like I said, my name is Rafael Lopez. If anything that I can do on my behalf to help out in any way, I'm more than willing to put in the work and time. So thank you for hearing me out. All right. Okay. Thank you. We're good. Go ahead. I'm gonna, I'll ask him. Good evening. Jason yes. Levat, resident of Bone Park, 43 years. Foster, you already know about it. I'm against it. Why? 
Please, Chief, you can correct me if I'm wrong. California ABC set, states 500 feet for alcohol. This is going to be less than 300 feet from a school. Why are we doing that? It needs to be... You can have multiple things put there. But 7-Eleven with a gas station? My daughter has asthma. We walk by there. I'm not going to be running her all the way over to the nearest hospital, which is Kaiser, because of the fumes. Or... If possible, gangbangers, uh, druggies, homeless, whatever, want to try and rob you? No. One of the other people that was here, his wife's purse was stolen from the, the gym. Your crime rates are going to go up multiple times because of the 7-Eleven. Uh, three stores I could think off of hand right now you could go buy liquor at. In the... Within yards, Walmart, Food for Less, Target. Why do we need another one right there? Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Anyone else wishes to speak? Oh, Margarita. Good evening. <clears throat> Margarita Vargas. Um, I, this is the first meeting that I attend with the new city council members the new city clerk. So I'm glad that to be here, and I congratulate you. But, Mayor, I just want to tell you again uh -huh. that you need to follow the agenda. I don't know if it's illegal or not, but when you do the report from closed session, before you call to order, invocation, pledge of alliance, and roll call, how can it be in the minutes? So I told you too many times, but I think now that you have Council Member Hernandez is really knowledgeable and had to ha do a meeting. And um, Alejandra, I miss Council Member Avila, that she was a city clerk. And you have a new city clerk. I know you and Mr. Pacheco don't believe in rubber rules, but it has to be some kind of order. And um, I'm it's asked me that when I'm seeing the agenda and you got to report from closed session, you, you haven't, like today was 15 minutes before you opened the meeting, and it was a, like another meeting, presentation, I mean, it was uh, somebody that spoke and all that. So I know a, a habit is really hard to break when you're doing it for 20 years, but you have a lot of people that can help you rem and remind you um, to do it, and you have the agenda in front of you. So uh, I'm just asking you as a favor to do that. Thank you. For me to be happy. All right, thank you. <laughs> but, but I have another, another um, thing. Uh, you know, that presentation about the art is really nice, and, and I like it a lot because I'm an artist myself. But we have an, a big problem, more urgent, the gang violence. I knew when that young man was killed in, the palm, in palm in La Rica, it was not going to be the end of it. Now we have another one, 17-year-old killed on, on uh, Olive. And, and you know how it goes. One from here, one from there. And uh, you know my son, he works really hard when he was a mayor to get rid of that guy, gang violence, graffiti, and prostitution. And we've been living real nice for so many years. I don't want to be a witness of starting violence again. So I hope the police department, they work so hard for that when he was a mayor, that we have enough officers that knowledgeable of the, the gang uh, problem, like uh, Officer Kobach, he was one of the best. So um, I hope that you are able to handle this, because I just heard my friend that she wants to move from, from Baldwin Park because of that. I don't know where she's going, that is not going to be violence, but <laughs> you know, I don't want Baldwin Park to be one of those cities. Thank you. All right, at this point, let me let me go ahead and I want to start up with, uh, I think, Mr. Lopez, did he leave? Mr. Lopez? Mr. Lopez and also uh, Mr. Um, uh, Robert Torres, not certain if they're still here. I know that the police chief has indicated that they've been working with uh, Mr. Torres. So why don't I have, uh, Chief, we've got to assign someone to also work with Mr. Lopez regarding the theft that has occurred. So just uh, so you understand, okay? You know what? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna. You'll get together uh, with uh, 
with, a, with an officer. And let me just also b begin, first of all, uh, recognizing the students from Foster. And I've been invited to Foster on many, um, on many occasions. I've been there. Excellent, beautiful school and excellent teachers. And I want to specifically thank and recognize the young students that are here. When I was your age, there's no way I could do that. So I, I want to first of all emphasize and let everyone know. I'm going to walk you through the little process so that every, everyone knows. Okay, you hear me on that? So a little process, uh, and, 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 and bear with me. First of all, let me recognize the police chief, uh, Pope, and thank you for being here, Bomb Park Unified School District, and also uh, Mr. Sergio, the risk manager. Your last name is Casota. Thank you, thank you, first of all, for being here, okay? Now, so that everyone knows, I'm going to explain the history. In May 23rd, there was a planning commission held. So I want to work with you, and I know the council will too, but we're going to have to see how we could work this out. But we need to know the history of it, the archive part. May 23rd, there was a planning commission here. The Ball Park Unified School District was sent a note prior to the 23rd letting them know that the 7-Eleven itself was going to be a proposed project in that specific little medium island. Are we clear on that one? So the Ball Park Unified School District was sent a letter. They, in turn, could have been here, could have uh, opposed and could have easily appealed the process. Now that's May 23rd. Two days ago, the Baldwin Park Unified School District administrative level contact the the city of Baldwin Park protesting. Well, you should have you should have informed the residents. Now 300 it required we're required by law to make sure that individuals within a 300 square feet area are also notified by mail. That is the actual law. You guys with me on that one? Okay, so just because I'm going to walk and we're going to see what we can do here. So I want to make sure that that is very clear. The school district should have done something on the 23rd, informed everyone that the actual public hearing was being held here so that they could have easily appealed it. Now, where are we at this point? That parcel, that property is private property. So anyone has the right to propose a project, and if it meets the requirements of the city ordinance, then they're allowed to do that. And in this case, of course, uh, uh, the uh, specific uh, individuals within that er area were forewarned of what was happening. So that's why a planning commission was held. That planning commission is another commission that sits here, and they will discuss and bring, uh, uh, um, allow people to come up and speak whether if you oppose or support the actual project. Now, what can we do at this point? Because that's already it's already gone through that actual process, and they met every, every, every ordinance uh, from the city of Baldwin Park. I think that we would probably do is address this with the air quality uh, manage management, the AQMD. That would be the next step. Uh, is that clear to everyone? Yes. So that's, and you know what? I'll attend, and I'm sure some of the council members will also attend to see what we can do. Where we live in Baldwin Park. I've been here since 79. Council members have lived here probably a lot, many more years than I have. So there's a vested interest because we're residents of Baldwin Park and everything that affects you affects us. And I know the congestion that occurs there. I drive to there in the morning. It takes me about a good 15 minutes, you know, just to go through that particular area to jump on the freeway. And yes, is it congested with vehicles parked all over the place? Absolutely. We know that. We all know that. And, and it's important for us to, excuse me, please, excuse me. Yeah, so it's important for us to be able to recognize. So I think that the next step at this point would be for, to find out when the actual mean, and I will request that we inform the, the Ball Park Unified School District. So make sure that you guys are alert with them. And we'll put it on our website when the next AQMD mean. I'll let the CO talk about that briefly. Um, yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, I understand that the school district has appealed to AQMD, oh, and it's okay, not no. known yet if there will be a hearing, um, but if there is, we will notify, uh, we will communicate with the school district and notify the city council. I did also want to just set um, a few facts about the project that's being um, proposed. Um, it says not a liquor store. There will only be sales of beer and wine. Um, singles are not allowed to be sold, and it's oh. not allowed to be consumed on site. This is um, to be taken home or taken off site to be consumed at another place. It is limited to only 3%. The, the display of beer and wine is limited to only 3% of the area, so it's only going to be a very small part of the store. Um, and they are required to also comply 
um, with all of the ABC, which is the state um, agency that license um, alcohol and beer sales. They will be required to comply with and become licensed with them and, re and comply with all of their requirements. They are required to comply with all of air quality management district requirements, which is also another state agency um, that regulates um, gas stations. Real quick, let me just just say so, so because uh, I was unaware that the, okay, so the d school district has appealed to the AQMD. I understand they sent a letter to the a AQMD appealing that, and I, I believe asking for a hearing. It's unknown yet if there will be a hearing. Um, also, this was approved by the Planning Commission. Um, this, this item never came to the City Council um, because it would never come unless someone went to the Planning Commission and appealed within 10 days of their findings. If it were appealed, it would have come to the City Council, but I just wanted to point out that that never happened. Yeah, and, and to let everyone know, had, had the school district been here and, and actually opposed and appealed the process, then it would come over to the City Council and everyone would have been notified so you come here as you are right now opposing the actual project. And the reason it's important for everyone to know the actual process itself. So I think that the next step, the next step is to, is to be in touch and we'll make sure that we're in touch with the school district to find out if in fact the AQMD is going to set an appeal and, and I will definitely be there. I'm certain that council members will also be there so that we can appeal it. But, but please note, that there was an actual process, and on part of school districts, someone dropped the actual ball itself, and that's the unfortunate part of what occurred. Someone in the administrative letter, a letter was sent. So, Mayor, yes, um, go ahead. I'd yeah, like Council to add Member. something to that. Yes. Um, I'm, thank you for the foster yes. parents and students that came to speak out. I, um, I'm very proud of you for coming out here and trying to protect everything that you work for, parents and the students, to make sure that you guys are safe. Um, so we're going to work on this to Absolutely. see what, what can be done. However, I also want to look at what can we do in the future to make sure this doesn't happen again. I understand a letter was sent. However, we need to follow up with the phone call and make sure that the district does receive this type of information because a simple letter, I mean, yes. letters, tons of letters come yes. into the district. We need to make sure they are getting our community. <laughs> Okay. And also oh, no, a letter. No, public could, communication is closed. Well, sorry about that. I have something to so, say. Sorry, sorry. I have something public to say. You're going to stop me from this just is, saying what I have to say. This is public communication. You could have sent a letter Excuse at the beginning of the planning this process is, to the totally students out of order. the school as totally well. Out of order. It doesn't matter. I can say what I can okay. say. You're elected by the people of the city. I understand. Yes, that's correct. I can correct. come and say what I have to okay, say. Okay, so I, I understand. So all I'm saying to add to wow. what she's she pointed out is that maybe in the future your process should be when the planning commission is going to be started, you send a letter then, not 30 days before it's going to expire for a chance for us to do anything. This is incredible. Okay. This is something for you to consider. It is incredible. It's incredible, and I'm here to tell you how incredible it is. And it's incredible if you allow this to go up. Let, let me first of all say, let me just first of all say again. You know what? You know what? Let me just, let me just say, I, I, you know, I could have easily have stopped you, but I did not. And I respect what you're saying here, to make it clear. Uh, hold on. Had I done that, had I done that at the school district, I probably would have been tossed right out. Now, I've done that here be before because there are, there are actual laws that govern this local municipal government, and we cannot, we cannot simply think, you know, think that you just come and easily do that. Because think, this is a community. Hold on. This is a community. That I understand. I understand what you're saying. I understand. I understand what you're saying. But it has this. This is a governed meeting. This is a governed meeting. This is a governed meeting. Okay. So, just so that you understand. And let me try that at the school district. I'll tell you what. Let's you and I try that at the school district, and you'll see what transpired. Both you and I are going to be popped right out. So okay. So let me let me just go back. So the letter was sent prior. It was sent prior. I don't. How long before did we send that? The letter was sent out to everybody, including the school district, within 300 feet, more than 10 days before the meeting. Um, and I did also want oh, excuse to... Excuse me. Please stop. I'm going to ask you to please stop. I did... I, I'm begging. I am begging. I am begging to please stop. Uh, please. I also okay. wanted to let you know we did meet with the school district today, and one of the things we talked about is communications in the future so that this um, doesn't happen again. Um, we're going to put them on an email list, and they will receive each and every planning commission agenda that goes out. So whether or not the project's even 300 feet from the school, they will still get a notice, and they will be aware of every project that's coming forth. 
And can I say something really quick? Yes. Um, this is um, to our audience and to our council here. I, I'm your former city clerk, and um, the public is allowed three minutes to, to speak on whatever subject you, you like to speak on, and we respectfully will listen to your, to your concerns. Um, you can, like you did today, many of you can come up and speak of the same subject. And we will listen to you. However, with all due respect, you do have three minutes to express your, your needs. And if you need more, then have more people come up. And then when the mayor addresses the, the public and addresses the council, your three minutes are up, unfortunately. So, so if you can have the respect for the council, we're definitely going to have it for you. So if we can do that, and maybe at the next meeting, if you want to come and continue to speak, we'd really appreciate it. But let's be respectful towards each other. Thank you. Right. Okay, so at this point, uh, at this point, what, what I, uh, again, uh, um, make sure that we contact the, uh, the, um, the school district. And I know both uh, Alejandra and I, and she was talking about, uh, about that uh, the conversation we had yesterday, to find out when they get that, if that letter is received, and in fact, when the actual AQMD hearing, if in fact, is going to be held. Now, can, can the public request that it be held, or, or is it up to the AQMD? Legal counsel. I'm just curious. I believe it's discretionary with the AQMD. So it is discretionary. I believe it is, Your Honor. Okay. So I, I, I think somehow we should push to have an actual uh, an actual hearing so that everyone here, including us, could be there. So let, so let's do this somehow. Legal counsel or, 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 or CEO, let's see how we can get together with the administrators over at the school district so we could ha make that happen. Mayor, Mr. Yes, oh, Council Member, sorry yeah, about Let that. me just Go say, ahead. I want to I want to thank all of you for being here. I, I appreciate that you bring your concerns here. You know, we represent all of you and all of your concerns. We want to protect your students. We want to make sure they're in a healthy environment and want to do everything that we can to do that. And I just like to also bring that, let's talk to 7-Eleven at the corporate level and let's tell them about our concerns too. And I think that they'll listen to us. Let's talk about maybe they don't put a gas station, they limit how they do their alcohol, uh, and they, you know, let's make sure that we work with them to either move the store or, or do something different, but we're not happy with what they're doing. So we can give them that option, but that is private property, so it's, it's, it's kind of hard to tell them what to do, but we can give them our opinions. We can go to them and, and do that. So I'd like to direct staff to communicate with 7-Eleven, mm -hmm. let them know the concerns that were brought here and what they could do to either, if they can't move the store to another location, uh, maybe they could modify it to uh, the satisfaction of, of our school, of our school students, more importantly. So thank you. All right, thank you. Very Real quick, uh, thank you, Council Member uh, Ricardo Pacheco. Now, this is what I want to do. We will send a letter to AQMD on behalf of the local municipal government, council members, to have a hearing and to have the hearing here, which means they'll sit here and we'll sit there, okay? So that's, that's what we'll do, okay? Now, and, and, and once again, and once again, I'm sorry. I mean, I know the frustration. I, I'm, I'm, no, 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 that's my, my no, there's no, I, I, that's why I'm apologizing. Look. I, and I just want to say, I, I, frustration, yes, I hear you. I definitely hear you. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to work together, and we're going to invite them here, uh, CEO, to have the actual public hearing here. So that means we're going to start over, okay, and we get that opportunity, okay? And sorry about that. Thank you. And we will make sure everybody no is notified so that you can attend that meeting, okay? Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, at this point, we're going to go into uh, consent and calendar. Uh, we have uh, items uh, one through, uh, oh, boy, we've got a lot today. Uh, one, through, uh, one through 12, actually. Yeah, that is true. One through 12. Council members wishing to pull any item? Mr. Mayor? Yes, uh, Council Member Hernandez. Can we do number eight, please? Number eight? Okay, number eight. All right, at this point, if no one else is wishing to pull an item, I will go ahead and make a motion to move consent calendar with the exception of number eight. That is my motion. Second. Second. Seconded by Council Member Pacheco. Uh, any objections? See none, so move. At this point, item eight, which is consideration for approval of amendment number, number one uh, to design a services agreement, DSA, with Southern California Regional Rail Authority uh, for 
is there an improvement to the to rail safety crossing improvements, uh, project quiet zone um, air ready come at Pacific Avenue and Bogart, and approval of amendment number four to the professional service agreement, et cetera. At this point, I'll give it over to Council Member Hernandez. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I have actually no issue in regards to this particular item, but I do want to make sure that uh, as we're looking at the quiet zones, uh, that uh, I know I've uh, expressed uh, some of my concerns and thoughts is if we can, instead of doing a parallel track, a linear track, uh, no pun intended, uh, that we're able to try to expedite the rest of the uh, quiet zone air, uh, improvements that we have, because I believe this is just uh, one of four, if, I, if I'm correct. Um, so That's if correct. we can do that and try to expedite uh, the other planning process uh, for our residents, because uh, it, it is a very lengthy process. Um, in which, uh, you know, I, again, uh, our local residents and still uh, school children uh, deserve uh, the utmost uh, priority if we can in regards to this project. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council Member. So at this point, go, I want to entertain a motion uh, to move item um, consent, cons excuse me, item number eight. Uh, I'll make a motion to pass. Second. 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 Council Member Ricardo Pacheco. Any objections? See none. So move. All right. So at this point, we'll go over to. Um, uh, we'll go over to the successor agency. Hmm. Okay, the successor agency. Okay, I'm going to move for consent calendars of consent. Uh, excuse me. All right, sorry about that. At this point, I will move for the consent uh, um, successor agencies, and that is my motion. Second. Any objections? See none so much. So it was seconded by Councilmember Ricardo Pacheco. There was no objections. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and move for adjournment of the successor agency. Second. Any objections? See none so move. All right, so at this point, <laughs> not in front of me. All righty. So at this point, we're going to go to um, reports of officers, which uh, 13, which is approval and adoption resolution number 2018 035, entitled A Resolution of the City Council of the City of Baldwin Park. Uh, appointing uh, representatives and alternative official representatives of the city and, and review the appointment members to establish committee and approval. Can we move this over to, ja to January the 16th, please? Yes, definitely. All right. All right, so that's my motion. Uh, yes. okay. Mayor, but I, I think um, some, of, some of them have to be chosen. Um, otherwise, potentially the last, you know, the island council persons could attend, con continue to. Well, like, like the Foothill Transit Authority. Well, let's pick it on the 16th. We're just gonna miss one. You want to go there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's a mo who second? Me. Oh, so, yeah, Alejandra, uh, Council Member Avila, the second. It. Any objections? All right. See none. So move. All right. The next one will go over to the City Council, which is a uh, mayor request council discussion direction regarding options for state of the. Uh, can we bring this to the following meeting, everyone? Yeah. What is it again? The, I know the business association. Um, if they're going to oh. be involved, they do need. Um, they are asking for an answer as, as soon as possible. I don't believe they were able to attend tonight. Yeah, let, let's move it over then, and we'll bring it back. Okay. All right, and then uh, the next one, CEO um, requests uh, council direction to draft a letter for the mayor and council signature to the county board of supervisors requesting that the fee increase be delayed until such time as study can be performed on the operational efficiency and Department of Animal Care and Control and solutions to be put into place, improve productivity, accountability, and reduce. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, yeah, and our um, fees are, are looking like they're going to quadruple over That's the next crazy. four years. Um, there have been some news reports um, about um, possible problems with accountability and productivity there, and we would like to um, send those letters out. We're coordinating with about 17 other cities in Los Angeles County who uh, have the same concerns. Astronomical. That, that's just crazy. All right, so we'll definitely send that letter. The next one is uh, C uh, CEO request that the uh, give a, dire a direction to work with Caltrans and business owners to have a sound wall removed from lower and near the Home Depot shopping center in Marriott. Yes, please. Thank you. We'll give you that direction. Okay. Thank All right. you. So at this point, council members wishing to share anything? Uh, Mayor, I would just like a, at our next uh, council meeting to give an update on the Caltrans off the off the off ramp. I know there's some improvements, but by then I would like to see yeah. more. Uh, you know where we're at. I don't want to back off on that. I want to continue to put the pressure we need so that that gets completed. Although they have done some good work and they are moving forward. I, I still think it's too slow, and they really need to uh, move forward on the landscaping and all the other work that they promised us they would do. All right, with that, uh, thank you. Oh, just one last item real quick, Mayor. Uh, we, we, and I know that there was issues brought up earlier about the handling of the agenda, and um, 
and and that type of thing. So I, just, I think it's important to recognize that we do follow the, the the rules of the common law of the state of California. When you come out of closed session, you're expected to report on the activities of closed session, and we did that, and then we follow the agenda as it is posted. So I don't I don't see any issue with the way we do the agenda. Thank you, Mayor. All right, th th thank you very much. Yes, at this point, uh, Councilmember Avila. First of all, um, I also want to send my condolence to the family member of that gentleman that was shot. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, and um, based on that, I want to ask a report of the police department. I know we have a gang unit. I, I'd like to know a little more about what their hours of, of operation are. I know in the past they used to work on weekends and in the evenings, I, and I know because I did many ride-alongs with them. I think our gang unit um, needs a lot more presence in our city because there has been a lot of shootings. I also would like to work more with the school district, more of a report on, the, on our city side, on the police side. What are we doing with our school district? In the past, we also had a lot of preventive work with the school district police and the city police where they would provide programs and we'd go back and forth with them. So I'd like to see what we're doing with that and if uh, we're not doing anything, if we can move forward and maybe some ideas uh, from you gentlemen to see what we can do to work with the school police so we can start working with, uh, I believe it starts at the junior high level, correct me if I'm wrong, but when I was working the junior high level, that's where we did a lot of the prevention working with the uh, gang unit and city police and school police providing presentations for our parents. So I'd like to see more of that, see if we can bring it back. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to? Yes, Mr. Mayor, yes, just want to wish everyone a, a happy holiday and a safe holiday. Thank you. Yes, thank, right. th thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. So at this point, I will go ahead and move for chairman of the city council, and I want to dedicate this to our chief, uh, Mike Taylor, for the 37 years, uh, the dedication and commitment to the city of Baum Park. Uh, Chief, thank you very much. So we dedicate this on his behalf. All right. All, right. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and move for adjournment. Hello? Second. Oh, second. Uh, okay, second uh, by who? Okay, uh, Councilman Ricardo Pacheco, any objections? See none, so move. At this point, I'd like to open up the Finance Authority. And so, Finance Authority, we have the consent calendars. I'll move for the Treasury report. That is my motion. Second. Second by Councilman Ricardo Pacheco. At this point, I will move for, for adjournment. Second. 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 Any objections? See none, so move. At this point, we'll move over to the Housing Authority. I'd like to uh, go ahead and move for consent calendars items one and two. Second. And who second? Councilman Ricardo Pacheco. Any objections? See none, so move. At this point, I'd like to move for adjournment. Second. Second by Councilman Ricardo Pacheco. <laughs> Uh, at this point, no objections. Thank you very much. Viva Baum Park and Happy New Year. Chief Taylor, Chief Taylor, Chief. Mayor's calling you.
Okay, then I'll sign another one. Yeah, okay.